Hey, this is Josh back here with Fight Bad Medicine. Today I want to talk to you about small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, or you might know it as SIBO. So SIBO is really just the overgrowth of bacteria within the small intestine. It could be even good bacteria, beneficial bacteria, commensal bacteria that's normally found in the small intestine. Just when it overgrows, that's when it creates the issue. Just like with Candida, Candida is normally found in the gut. It's found in our bodies, but when, it's, when it overgrows, that's when it really creates issues. And what kind of issues can it create? So we know that SIBO is related to IBS. IBS, we know, can be constipation, could be diarrhea, or can really shift both ways. So now digestion can slow down, can speed up. Why is this? So what happens is in SIBO, the reason, the reason you get this overgrowth is because the kinetic system with, of the intestines is not working at the right pace. It's either going too fast and the, the food is just moving along really quickly or it's just not moving along fast enough. So you kind of need to get this kinetic system um, in sync. So that's why we really have to focus on the movements of the intestines and to regulate the, the, the pace that the food is digested. So how do we do this? So the first thing we talk about with small intestinal bacterial overgrowth is to kind of starve it a bit and to not feed into these good bacteria. So things that are normally really, really good for us, like let's say garlic and onion, not so great in terms of overgrowth of bacteria because they will stimulate growth of the bacteria. Now, where do we know this from? So there's something called a low FODMAP diet. So there's certain sugars, um, FODMAP sugars. So um, you've got your fructose, oligosaccharides, disaccharides, monosaccharides, uh, polysaccharides. So these can really um, simulate growth of, um, of bacteria in the gut, which can normally be a very beneficial thing. But when you have too much, it's going to push you in the wrong direction. So we want to eat a diet that's a low FODMAP diet. Now to go through all the foods that the low FODMAP diet includes, it would it would turn your head upside down and it's really really difficult to do if you just have the foods. That's why I always recommend to my patients to just get a really good cookbook, a low FODMAP cookbook that tells you exactly which recipes to use because you're going to turn your head over um, just to find what to eat. Um, but another thing about the, the low FODMAP diet is that it could be very um, animal protein heavy, and that's not such a great thing. So um, there is a really good book. Um, it's a low FODMAP diet by Sue Shepard. The thing is, there's not that many recipes which are plant-based. And so um, came along Joe Stepaniak, and she wrote um, a really, really good um, low FODMAP diet cookbook, a vegan low FODMAP diet cookbook. So you're, you're getting your plant-based foods, but at the same time, you're getting these low FODMAP foods. So you're kind of in a really, really good place eating like that. Now, you don't have to eat like this long term. We're talking about for maybe 45 days because you don't want to eat like this long term because if you starve your good bacteria for too long, again, it'll send it in the wrong direction. We kind of want it to be even keel. So you do it for about 45 days. But at the same time, you have to make sure to get rid of that overgrowth of bacteria. So um, a really good supplement, which is also used for candida, is candacid forte from, from orthomolecular. So this will kind of um, tamper down the the even the the good the good bacteria because it's just there's too much overgrowth so it'll it'll bring that down a little bit so it has things like berberine it has um, oregano oil so these things are really 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 good antimicrobials which could uh, potentially bring down the bacteria to normal levels and then. Um, now, with SIBO, you have these bacteria that can really produce a couple of gases, hydrogen, ga hydrogen gas, methane gas, um, just because, and this is really what really causes the symptoms are 
are the, the gases that are given off by these by the overgrowth of, of the bacteria. Um, like we know like methanobacter is one of those uh, species of bacteria and that creates methane SIBO. So um, if you don't know which one you have, um, I would really go uh, with allicillin. So allicillin is Designs for Health version of allicin. Um, people always ask this question, it's made out of garlic. However, it, there's, it's just an extract. So you don't have to worry that it's um, a high FODMAP supplement because it's just an extract and it's going to bring down, um, it's, going, it's just going to bring down the, the bacteria to a normal level. It's not going to uh, cause it to, to grow. It actually will tamper, tamper down the bacteria and help get rid of those, uh, the methane causing bacteria. Another, um, another reason for SIBO could be overgrowth of E. coli. And that's why the probiotic that I recommend is Probiophage uh, DF. That's from Designs for Health. Um, I would not recommend a bacteria with with um, you know high count like you would do in a candida uh, protocol. You know nothing like hundred billion like that. And you also have to look out for the specific uh, probiotics that you use. You don't want to get one with a prebiotic because that will feed the bacteria, which can make a bad situation worse. So Probiophage DF is really great because it has a carrier, a viral a viral carrier that can actually target um, E. coli species and E. coli overgrowth. Really, really fantastic probiotic to use um, in this, in this um, situation. You always want to target the probiotic to whatever situation, um, whether it's a gut issue or some other, some other issue um, that's going on in the body. You want to get the specific um, strains that will target that issue. So in this case, it's probiophage DF. You want to make sure that the food is pre-digested because that's one of the reasons for SIBO. You can look back at tips for healthy digestion. You want to just get mo things moving along. So um, again, I like Digestive Enzymes Ultra from Pure Encapsulations. Um, great digestive enzyme, it'll pre-digest the food so the food's not sitting there. That's a reason for overgrowth of whether it's SIBO or candida, you don't want the food to sit there in, in, the, in the gut. You don't want it to start rotting. You need it to, you need to be broken down and get absorbed and move along and be eliminated. Um, Monolorn Avail, uh, again, Monolorn is very good at breaking down the biofilms, so uh, Monolorn Avail will be fantastic here. GI Revive. Um, GI Revive is fantastic because it's it's a really comprehensive way of sealing the gut. If you find that the GI Revive is is bothering your um, SIBO symptoms, then I would go with just maybe just plain L-glutamine. But in general, G people tolerate the GI Revive very well, and it's a very very good um, supplement to help heal leaky gut. Uh, because you got, and also it, is, it will also push the food through. It's got aloe in it, so that's really, really good for softening the stool and as, as a prokinetic, very, very good for, for moving, moving things along in the gut. Another prokinetic that's very important to eliminate, um, eliminate stuff in the gut is magnesium citrate. It, that, that will just help really move things along. And the, and the more you move things along, the less spasms you're going to have in your gut. Um, and the less it's going to have to uh, adjust for, for this infl inflammation and, um, and, and uh, sensitivities to just food just sitting there and rotting. So getting things moving along will really get to the root cause of these spasms and the issues with the kinetics. Um, now, just like any uh, gut protocol where, you're, where there's a die-off, I recommend you know doing like um, you know ten days on, um, you know a week to two weeks, so around ten days, ten days on, and then ten days off of the thing like candesid forte and allicillin. In this in this example, where it's killing um, things off, you stop that for ten days, and you would do the GI detox, which is your activated charcoal. Um, and the bentonite clay and the zeolite, that's from Biobotanical Research, GI Detox. 
And so that's going to, again, pull things out, um, pull the dye, pull the, the dye off out so you don't get those Jarosz Herxheimer reactions and those symptoms. So beyond, beyond the SIBO protocol, um, SBI Protect would be very, very good because it'll continue to pull things out and pull the toxins out from the die off. Um, but it's also been shown in research to really, really help with IBS. It really helps balance that, um, balance the gut flora and it also um, promotes uh, uh, lactoferrin, which starves these the, um, the overgrowth of bacteria or, or candida and starve them from, um, from iron, which will allow to, the gut to reach a good, good balance. Um, and I'll continue with the, di the Digestive Enzymes Ultra also, and maybe indefinitely, just because maybe you have an issue with digesting food and you want to, that's really, really the main thing, um, is that making sure the food is digested properly. And again, go back to, to those tips for healthy digestion. You know, just chewing food properly is very, very important. And again, after any gut protocol, I always like to do a detox just to reset the detox system and to get rid of any junk that was left over. So the Core Restore uh, program from Orthomolecular is really fantastic. So I would go with that. If you really need a, a basic, basic uh, SIBO protocol, you could try um, Candacid Forte, uh, the ProBiophage DF, Digestive Enzyme Ultra, and like L-Glutamine or GI Revive. So those four things, which would be really, really fantastic. Thank you for joining me today. Please subscribe. And um, if you like our videos, um, you know, keep watching. We have really, really good stuff coming up. So thank you so much and have a fantastic day. Remember to fight bad medicine.